talking about your new book. You're all weird. I love this book, and I love the Portland Santas. You would love that. It's a fantastic example. And you know, a gift for you that I'm going to send you. I think Portland is really, this is Portland. Keep Portland weird. Have you heard of this? Yes. The bumper stickers. Love and it. I went over and I asked. Music Millennium. Where did this start? And this music company got it from Austin. But Correct. the idea, it's basically to have us support local, which fits into your, fits yeah. into your book. That's right. So I'd love to have you talk about the new book. So tell me why you wrote this book now. Well, so here's what's going on, Cheryl. We, you know, we had a hundred years of prosperity that came from the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution is really simple. If you get a whole bunch of people together for organized work, they can make things cheaper than anybody else. And since we can make things cheaper, we become richer because productivity leads to wealth. Mm -hmm. But inherent in a factory is you've got to sell a lot of what you make, which is why we have mass advertising, mass marketing. Sell it to everyone. But you know what's inherent in mass marketing? is this belief that everyone needs to fit in. So when a mathematician draws that curve, the distribution, they call that stuff in the middle, the normal. That's the normal part of the bell curve. Mm -hmm. Well, the more people who are normal, mm -hmm. the more people who are right-handed and do this sort of activity and like that sort of hobby and vote this sort of way, the easier it is for the factory to make money. And so we created this cultural expectation of normalcy. So people who aren't like us, the ones who are outliers, the ones who are weird, those people are wrong and normal is right. And this worked for 100 years because we were willing to trade it for richness. Mm -hmm. But part of being rich means being able to make choices. Mm -hmm. So when you let people make choices and then you connect them to one another on the internet so they see other people who are as weird as they are, even weirder, they take the choice. And so one by one, society peels away. So we got the people who want dreadlocks and the people who have tattoos and the people who are gay and the people who are happy to play basketball in their 60s and the people um, who want to live this lifestyle or have that lifestyle. And suddenly there's more stuff on the outside of the curve than stuff that's on the inside of the curve. And that means that if you have the mindset of a manufacturer, which is that I only want to serve the normal, you're about to be stressed out because normal is deflating and all this other stuff. The weird stuff is going great gangbusters. You know, I mean, you know wine really well. And what you know is that, you know, the Gallo $12 a bottle average wine for average people business is not so good. Yeah, don't but, bring a box of wine to my house. Yeah, exactly. But the fringe <laughs> stuff, the people yeah. who are willing to cross the street and pay 100 bucks for a special thing that there are only 2,000 bottles of it, that business is going great. And so at, from a commercial point of view, the lesson here is, Embrace the weird because the weird is happening whether you want it to or not. Do you right. want to just say about this book and encouraging entrepreneurs to go out there and... Well, let me, let me try to put a, a finer point on it for people who haven't read it. And okay. One of the things I'm discovering is book buyers are weird. The vast majority of people do not buy books and do not read books. And it's a big deal for someone to buy a book. I try to make them easily accessible. I try to make them cheap. I do not believe in a hard sell at all, but I hope you'll spend a few minutes to read this one, even though it's only 85 pages long. The key here is this. When we think about the future, it keeps being weird. Mobile phones, for example, are the weirdest media source ever. Because if there's going to be an ad on my mobile phone, I don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. Unless it's an ad about me, about right now, and about right here. So if I'm about to walk into a store and I've given my phone permission to know who I am and what I like, and my phone beeps at me and says, you know, the shoe store across the street sells the same thing for half the price, I want to hear that, right? Mm -hmm. If I've taught my phone where I'm flying and it knows I'm about to fly Delta to LA in four hours, and it sends me a note from Virgin that says, Seth, we know you're flying to Delta in four hours. We have an empty seat on our flight. We'll upgrade you to first class, half the price you want to go. I'm like, bring that stuff on. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's weird. That's yes. not mass. That's yeah. an ad for one person. And the reason that media, mobile hasn't taken off is because the advertisers don't know how to think that way. 
The customers do. The customers are psyched. Right. But the advertisers are still trying to trick people to see that same generic junk. And so uh, the book touches on that, but it also touches on things like how do we treat that Swami in India or that farmer in Katali, Kenya? How do we treat those people on the streets in Egypt? Are they the other? Are they too weird for us to deal with? Do they just get our aid and then we're done with them? Or is the world about to become this really complicated marketplace? Because that guy in India is only two clicks away from me in New York. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, if I can bring everyone together digitally, I either have to honor his weirdness by doing business his way or ignore him. And I guarantee you the business, the people who do business his way will make one more sale. Because a sale is something that benefits the seller and the buyer, yeah. and it permits everyone the dignity and the respect of choice. Mm -hmm. And so I look at some politicians who are demanding we go back to the old days when everyone looked the same and talked the same and obeyed the same and did everything the same. And I'm like, you know what? You can maybe get elected one more time on that, but then it's over because we live in Weirdville now, and Weirdville has different rules. Well, thank you so much for your time. A pleasure. And, yeah, really, a pleasure for me too.